My name is Gunner, and I play in a local Austin band called The Big Gun Show. Started this podcast to sit down with other songwriters, musicians, artists, and lovers of music to talk about their top five records that have inspired their musical tastes and their lives. Everyone has a reason why they pick their top five, and often, quite often, they're different. Might be because they influence their lives or music. Might be because it takes them back to a memorable time in their lives. Heck, it might even be that they can describe a smell or a taste when they first heard it. Tonight I'm talking with Rosie Flores. She's a friend and she's my guitar teacher. She's won multiple Ameripolitan Awards as well as a Peabody Award for her narration of a documentary called Whole Lot of Shaken. She has an actual day named after her in Austin. It's on August 31st, and she was also inducted into the Music Austin Music Hall of Fame in 2007. She's even been on both Austin City Limits, Late Night with Conan O'Brien, and it's pretty awesome having one of your good friends as a hero. She also, in 2012, released Working Girls Guitar, and in 2019, she dropped her long-awaited blues album called Simple Case of the Blues. Please check them out. They are incredible. Have you heard about Campfire Gathering? Well, I'm going to be the camp counselor, the camp director, whatever you want to call me. It's an adult summer camp featuring killer music, food, and vibes. Uh, It's going to take place on Monday through Wednesday between the two South by Southwest weekends. In 2020, that's going to be March 16th, 17th, and 18th. It will take place at Camp Lucy in Dripping Springs, just 30 miles outside of Austin. Uh, Night one is going to feature a couple of shows and some dinner. Uh, Wake up the next day and choose between your favorite camp time activities. You want to do some yoga? How about archery, axe throwing, fishing, winery tour? Just take your pick. And when you're done with your activities, head over to the main hall and start seeing acts such as Ray Wiley Hubbard, Deer Tick, Delta Spirit, among other big names. There also is going to be some chapel sessions with Nikki Lane as the headliner and woo. Love me some Nikki Lane. We're going to be bringing in uh, RVs and yurts, so you got places to stay. So head over to www.campfiregathering.com. Get your tickets, get your lodging. Uh, let's get some fun going on there. It's going to be a blast. Now, let's get to the conversation. Close your eyes. You're on that desert island again. What five records do you have? Here we go. All right, Rosie. Welcome to the top, my top five records podcast. Good to be here, Gunner. I'm a little bit surprised at your selections. I really thought with our connection with Keith that mm-hmm. you would have a Stones album on there. Well, you know, if you would have given me six albums, <laughs> that would have been perfect. And you, I'll have to say that I traded, you know, I went over this all morning and uh, I kept saying, I don't know which Stones album I could pick the first Stones album because that was the one I listened to constantly and learned how to play Keith Licks too. But I but I wanted to really share my Linda Ronstadt side. I hear you. You know, and so I kind of traded them out. I also had a, um, if I could add seven, I would add Gary Stewart, who's one of my favorite country singers, and I lived and breathed every single song on his record, uh, not only because of his great voice, but of the great songwriting and guitar licks that were on the Gary Stewart album. And he became a friend of mine, and I feel really bad. I couldn't put him on the top five. Well, but okay, so what I see here is okay. Abbey Road by the Beatles, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan, uh, Don't Cry Now by Linda Bronstadt, Shape of Things, and I could not find that one, so I couldn't listen to it. And then I think you wanted Are You Experienced? Uh, okay, uh, Shapes of Things is not the title of the album. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, Jeff Beck, not Beck, as in Silver Lake I, I, Beck. I know, I know that, but I, oh, just, okay. I just put that on there. Yeah, um, it was called Truth. It's an album called Truth by okay. Jeff Beck. Well, we can talk about that in a second, but let's start with Abbey Road. Now, I, I, this doesn't surprise me at all because I know on your girl guitar album, or working girl's guitar. Well, uh-huh, working girl's guitar. But you covered a, a Beatles song. Well, yeah, I mean, um, when I was young, when I was a teeny bopper, I fell in love with the Beatles, as did every girl my age. Um, it was 1965, and it was exciting, and I was learning about my sexual feelings toward men and rock stars and music. 
I mean, I had already been a singer since I was uh, like yeah. eight. I'm almost wanting to dive into the sexual feelings, but we can <laughs> we can do that later. Well, you know, it was the first time I was like, oh my God, I have a crush on a rock star. Which one? George Harrison. George. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just thought he was really cute, and I always really wished I was Patty Boyd, but I wasn't ever going to be Patty Boyd because I wasn't a blonde. Right. <laughs> and he would have never gone for me, but then he ended up marrying a, a Hispanic woman anyway. So talk to me about <laughs> Abbey Road. Why is this one of your, what, is, what did this do to you? It made me want to write songs and play guitar even more, and it made me feel, you know, like... When, when the first time I heard it, I just, I almost wanted to cry. That's like kind of those songs got to the core of me and um, the melodies. And, you know, I'm, people probably, you're surprised because you don't know how much I love. Like on this list, you might have been surprised because you don't know how much I'm into pop music. Right. So I love pop music. I love country music. I love the blues and I love jazz and I didn't put any jazz on my top five because I was trying to put more up on my rock and roll side. Uh, my jazz thing is a whole other world, you know, and that, that album's somewhere in the making right now. Uh, but this is all about the rock and roll Rosie that okay. I thought you were more that's interested well, that's in. That's not what I, I'm actually more interested <laughs> in what your top, what, if you had to go to jail yeah. or if you had to go to a desert island, what are these the five albums you would take? God forbid. Don't put me in jail already. I haven't well, done anything. I, know, but I like saying jail better than <laughs> desert island. Desert, desert island sounds a little sexier to right, me then, than jail. So would you say that Abbey <laughs> road is, uh, is what inspired you to write songs? I mean, all these guys, Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks, he was early. You know, it kind of started when I started writing songs. I'll have to say that it, Dylan was my first uh, songwriter that I aspired to write songs like because I had just learned how to play guitar and I bought a, a an acoustic guitar. It's a forty dollar guitar, but I How old my, are you? my dad made me pay ten dollars a month to get it, <laughs> and it took me four months to pay it off. It was an Aria uh, nylon string acoustic. I ended up selling it, which I feel really sad about. Um, there's a girl out there that owns it. I think she's still around, and um, so I started with kind of playing Bob Dylan songs because I could already sing. Right. I sang "Coming Out of the Womb." My dad used to record me when I was seven and eight. Nice. There's a lot of those tapes still yep. around. In fact, one's on Rockabilly Philly. Oh, it's really? It's the closing track. It's the bonus track. I need to um, hear that. And that's me, seven years old. All right. So but with, anyway. With uh, Blown Tracks and Dylan, I, I'd listen yeah. to that today. And you know what I took away from that is it's definitely not a, a current album in the sense that the songs are seven and five. The songs are longer. They're than typical. really long songs. They're like five and seven minute yep. songs. Yeah. And yeah. it was all about just get out what you have to say. This is not. And you know what? Radio played his songs he back was, in the FM FM radio days. They didn't care. Right. That's back when in FM. The day. That's when FM radio Today's was it's, happening. It's different. But, you know, and what I, what I noticed yeah. about a lot of the songs is that, you know, there was no real super hook on them other than kind of like the tagline, you know. It's and it, just poetry. It, yep, I, I'd agree with that. It's just poetry, and that's what songwriters really are, poets, you know. And then it became, you know, like, oh, how to write a hit song. You have to have a verse and a verse and a bridge and another verse, you know, and you have to have a hook line and... You know, I fell into that whole Nashville thing yeah. when I got signed, you know, in 1986. And it was all of a sudden they were putting me with different songwriters that were getting hits on the radio. And, and I was like, oh, it's there's a craft to it, you know. And my early songs were more rambling right. like Dylan. And they had, you know, I, th I think I always had kind of a hook lick. But like I had this one song I wrote. That was the same chord changes through the whole song. Mm -hmm. And it's one of my favorite songs I've ever written. I need to bring it back. And it's called I Just Want to See You Again. But um, the thing about uh, Dylan's uh, Tangled Up in Blue, Simple Twist of Fate. Great song. Uh, you know, uh, 
Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts, they just go on and on. It's poetic and it's it's almost like rap music would be to the young kids now. Like that is how he spoke to me is how like a rap artist would speak to my nephews yeah, now, right. you know. Okay. Uh, the song I really like on that album was If You See Her Say Hello. That kind of gave me chills. Mm. That was a good one. And, uh, I forget what, what, there was like a, a, a yeah. doubled instrument part or, or where it was like, you know, it was like a steel and a, and a slide at the same time. And it was, it was you like that one. I, I dug that one for well, sure. You, you love country steel and stuff like that. I, I do. You, you are a country artist. Uh, thank you. Well, I, yeah. I consider myself more Keith Richards, but thank you. I'm a rock and roller, well, but Keith is pretty country. Yeah, I agree. He loved Graham Parsons. He did. He loved all that country stuff. He loves the blues for sure. Well, that's that's the period of the Stones that I, I try to emulate right there. But yeah, so there's that. And the, I want to talk about Linda Ronstadt. Actually, you know what? Uh, before we talk about Linda Ronstadt, I want to talk about why Bob Dylan, you're, you're saying it's the poetry, what he comes out and, and, and says and what he means. Because I can't get into Bob Dylan. I can't get into Towns Van Zandt. I, I'm trying to get into Chris Christopherson. And these are these legendary songwriters. I'm, I'm starting to understand Keith, I mean Chris a little bit. but Those three that you mentioned are so different from each other, though. They are, but they're all known. And Guy Clark, too. I've read his book. I, I'm still trying to understand and get into the mind of these songwriters. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have an insight into that, but if you do, I'd love to hear it. Well, each one of those guys are uniquely different and have a way of saying something that is like something, a line that you've never heard before, you know, and, you know, to reach out there and try to say something that nobody else has said before, but to get something off your chest. I mean, mm -hmm. those guys inspired the great Rodney Crowell. They yep. inspired the great songwritings of Steve Earle and many women out there as well. And to listen to something that you go, whoa, I wouldn't have thought to say that or in a melody hook. And uh, I mean, if you if you listen long enough to take one artist at a time and and sink your teeth into them, it'll hit you and you'll figure it out. You know, it's like one of those things where, you know, there's there's pop songs that have like really cute little hooks and or ble even blues songs that keep coming around, you know. The thing I like about the blues and the Stones, the early Stones, that they were so, so simple. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't it wasn't all complicated. Like, you didn't have to think real hard, like a Guy Clark song or, or like a Towns song. You know, but you're like you're looking at Bob Dylan. I mean, there's classes in college about what is we're going to spend this you know month on what this song means <laughs> right and you know and you you listen to a bob dylan interview and he's like well, i don't know what you're talking about there's nothing uh there's nothing deep about that or yeah. i didn't mean you know what do you mean i'm the spokesman of uh of the generation he's uh, like i'm just writing songs I'm i was just... reading a um something <laughs> about me where he denied that that um Blood on the Tracks was autobiographical, but when you asked his son, he was like, oh, yeah, that's about my parents. Yeah, I, I read that, too, actually, that Jacob Dylan yeah. said that that's all about my parents' life, you know. Right. Um, th that's probably true, because who would know better than him? Correct. You know? All right, so I think the words, every song I've ever written is autobiographical. I can say that that's not the case for me. Yeah. I, I like to imagine a, a real bad boy and doing, you know, crazy like People. things that's yeah. just the way I, I look at it like right. I, I i try to make up things and yes there might be some autobiographical pieces but not always you know so you're telling me you're not not really a bad boy oh don't get me wrong don't get me wrong i, <laughs> I, I mean under satan's mistletoe you know uh, <laughs> all, all those lyrics you know i so. beg to differ I'm, I'm sure that you are a bad boy okay uh, I, i'll agree i yep. just but they're, they're not autobiographical okay anyway Gosh. all right linda ronstadt <laughs> in the words of hank williams jr i love linda ronstadt let's hear your take on linda ronstadt and why this album i used to lay on the floor uh you know because I, I was in a band starting at age 16 so i think by the time her record was out was when that particular heart like a wheel was out I was in my very early 20s and um, I used to go down to this little place that Jack Temption the guy that wrote Peaceful Easy Feeling mm -hmm. he him and his, this guy owned a little bar and I used to go down there and 
play with my acoustic guitar and that I just remember that being the era when I was really into uh, emulating uh, that heart like a wheel record and I would smoke pot smoke a joint I mean and lay on the ground with the headphones like the headphones I have on now yeah. and just lay on the rug and play that record play that vinyl over and over again and got so much joy of singing every line along with, with her. her and so what I learned was not only great songwriting from the likes of John David Souther yeah and who ended up being her boyfriend and producer and um uh learning her f learning how to phrase and you know what the main thing I learned you know besides pitch you know I learned I've always had pretty good pitch but I think practicing along with her it was like a it was like a study yeah. and uh, my pitch was really good and um but the main thing I learned from her was how to sing from the heart like some of her songs would like bring tears because she was she was singing like from experience like like you know, if something really hurt her. You could hear her, the cry in her voice, and and uh, I learned a lot from that record. So I really wanted to put that out there more than the Stones, um, only because the Stones is uh, there's a lot of covers of blues songs that were done by other people, and uh, Keith is, you know, he's a lot like Chuck Berry, and he learned from Chuck Berry. And so I I listened to a lot of Chuck Berry when I was a uh, in the you know in the 1950s when I was a kid growing up, right. and um, there was Chuck Berry and Elvis and Buddy Holly, and all that kind of roots rock and roll the beginnings of rock and roll Elvis all that. Um, of course, I was influenced by that as a little girl, but when I put a guitar in my hands, I was kind of past that, and I came back to rockabilly later after the fact you know okay so uh, did, I, I did like that, that answer your question or did i uh, yeah it, get it, it, more it did confused? you know i mean she's got this and i'm really excited to see this new documentary that's about to come out have you heard of this what, what new she's documentary? got there's a new documentary coming out on linda ronstadt oh i've seen it yeah, yeah it's oh it's already out it's i don't think it's out yet is it oh yeah i saw it well then it's that's beautiful. what i'm gonna do later tonight probably Anyway, but you know, Do I've it. always, I've always, again, Linda Ronstadt. I've, I've been trying to get into her, and I'm, I think, it's just one of those things that I just have to spend the time doing it. I'll put a mixtape together for you. Hey, uh, awesome! I'd love that. Just do it on Spotify or whatever. Okay. But yeah, so you know, I, I, I just think she's so cool, and and she's sexy too. Come on, we got to talk about that, right? Do we? I think so. Well. I want to be her, <laughs> <laughs> except I don't want to be her, her now because she's really sick and she can't sing, but I uh, always wanted to be, I always wanted to be, to have, like, I think of Linda Ronstadt as being the woman that had the most charmed life up till, you know, when she got sick, but she had looks, she had talent, she was able to go to a record company and say, I'm going to do country, but now I'm going to do new wave rock and roll. Now I'm going to yeah, do yeah. a record in Spanish. Yeah. And now I'm going to sing jazz with the Nelson Riddle Orchestra. And that, you know, I relate to that. Yes, you do. Because I have my jazz group and I've done punk rock. I've done blues. I've done rock you know, country and rockabilly. And I, I feel like, hey, if Linda Rodson can do whatever the fuck she wants to do, I want to. Why can't I? You know what I say that? Hell yeah. I you think know, everybody should. I think everybody should be able to express themselves without worrying about, oh, I don't want people to like get confused. At what? It's like, hello, it's still me, you know, like, look what I'm into now. Follow me up. That's right. Follow I me think up, that's kids, you know. Yeah, you know, it's like, I mean, every every artist I would hope would be more experimental than they are. You know, I mean, I think Wilco is a great example of that. I think there's a lot Wilco of other, is. a lot of bands that try to, you know, push the needle and, and do stuff. And a lot of times, you know, I love what they did at, at the beginning. And those are my favorite portions of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Quaker City Nighthawks is another band that I really admire. And they're starting to kind of push it as, as well. And so mm -hmm. I, it's like you have to try to you have to give those new efforts that they do a chance and you have to listen to them. And you can't just listen to them like once or twice. You have to give it a, a good like five to ten lessons before you can actually go, OK. I, I, I see where they're going. 
I get it earlier than 10 lessons. I usually don't spend, if I don't get it in the first, like, two, I usually give it two lessons. And if I don't get it, I'll have to move on to another record. I'm, yeah. I'm live a Fair. shorter thing on that because I have so many things I have to listen to. Right. It's just like, uh, I don't have enough time. But uh, uh, but I know what you mean, though. And, and God bless you for trying and, you know, giving everybody 10 listens. If somebody says something, and it's not always 10 lessons, but yeah, if somebody tells me, you know, I'm obsessed with Towns Van Zandt or mm. I'm obsessed with so-and-so yeah. and I don't get it, then yeah. that oh, means then, I yeah. have to go figure out what album I want to listen to. Like Jeff Blankenhorn told me two of his five top mm. fives were uh, Axis Bold is Love by Jimi Hendrix mm. and Towns Van Zandt Live at the Old Quarter. And oh, so, I had that record. I, I, and I, I listened to the whole thing. I had that and, double album. And then I went and looked to try to find if I could find a book about uh, or just of Towns' lyrics. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find that. I wanted I wanted a, like a coffee table book that I could just read his I lyrics. Have a, I have a little book on him. I, I'll bring, next time I see y'all. Fair enough. Bring it. But S um, Speaking of yeah. that, let's roll to Jimi Hendrix. Jimmy! My, wi my wife's favorite guitar player in the world. Nice. Yes, it is true. She's a total blues woman. Nice. Why is Jimmy in your top five? Because he's the greatest guitar player that ever lived. His his um, story, you know, I've watched a lot of documentaries on him too. Um, I saw him play live, and I was really young, and I never forgot him. And that was after I was a Jeff Beck freak. You know, that was after I was a Yardbird freak and yeah. Paige and Jeff Beck. But when I saw him live and heard those tones live in front of me um it just became more real and i you know i'd heard him on the radio and i loved you know purple haze and all that stuff but um you know hey joe where are you going with that gun in, in your, your hand? hand yeah and all that you know like i'd heard it on the radio and we used to play it so loud me and my friends and um when i heard him live it, it took me to a whole other uh amount of respect for him as a um a rock guitar idol, you know, and I was in a all girl band at that time called Penelope's children. And I was a teenager. And so as soon as I got back from that concert, I even actually somewhere in my archives, I have a picture of that. I took of Jimi Hendrix on that concert and, uh, he's playing guitar with his teeth. Where was he playing? What, what club? It was, it was an outdoor concert okay. in, uh, outside of Palm Springs, California. Um, I think it was called the Newport Festival or something like that. Um, I can't remember. I used to have the poster. I might have it tucked away in my archives. But um, there was a lot of cool 60s bands on there. It was like Country Joe and the Fish and maybe the Jefferson Airplane were on it. It was, it was that era. And uh, I'm actually writing a book, and what happened to me because of staying late and watching Jimi Hendrix. Hold, hold after on, hold on. let's Jim go back to this. You're writing a book right now. Yeah, I'm writing a book called Wacky Truck Stop Candy and Road Stories. And there's what a, there's a little name. story about what happened to me after I stayed to watch Jimi Hendrix. So t talk to me about the book. I don't even know about oh, this. Oh, you're kidding. I haven't told no, you about no, it. No, you haven't. Oh, uh, it's called Wacky Truck Stop Candy. Because I've collected all of these candies from being on the road in the, in the candy section. Right. Like I found, the first thing I found was little washing machines called Dirty Laundry Candy. And it, the, <laughs> the can, candy spins around like a washing machine. It says it spins. And you can spin the candy around and then it's got the front loader and you open it up. And the, the candy's shaped like socks and shirts and underwear. And they're like made of sweet well, that's tart. That's great. And so all of that candy's been photographed. So the chapters are named after the candy. So there's a dirty laundry candy chop chapter. Um, there's one called Worms and Dirt, Slug Suckers, and Bubblegum Guitars. And so you have you have all of these candies, and you're saying there's going to be a chapter on each candy, and the chapter. Well, some of them are like three candies because it. Some candies like incorporate themselves into the stories. So what a chapter, Dirty Laundry Candy just 
is all by itself because I have so much dirty laundry to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I and want so to hear some of that. I want to read that chapter. Yeah, I'm. That was one of the things I'm going to be doing when I go stay out of the desert for a month. It's trying to work on that book, trying to get it closer to finished. That's awesome. Um, I, I definitely. We don't have time today, but I. I need to hear more about the book. All right, we'll do another awesome. podcast on the book. I, you know what? That sounds great. We'll call it top <laughs> top one book. My top one book. Um, so you mentioned earlier that Jeff Beck is kind of influential I'm, I'm am i saying that right he's probably or heroic yeah i mean he's he's influenced me probably more um you know i i love the fluidity and the melodic uh kind of lines that he comes up with and he's he's real precise and super like that one song, excuse me, like that one song, um, uh, Because We Ended as Lovers, that song makes me want to cry when I hear him play that. Okay. And I want you to listen to it. I I will. And I want actually, you to listen to Actually, we can do that. it as soon as we're done here. Yeah. And uh, I've seen him play it live like five times, and it gets me every time. And uh, there's just something about... How Jeff Beck plays is like how I would want to sing. Yes, I, I, I He's completely like understand that. A voice, you yeah. know, and that you know when I first the record that I chose, Jeff Beck Truth, I saw him twice with Rod Stewart and Ronnie Wood was his bass player when I was wow. young, and me and my brother took the family station wagon. We said we're going to go to the drive-in movie, and I was like <laughs> sixteen or something, and we we instead drove up to the Hollywood. Um, I can't remember if it was at the Palladium or my brother remembers. And we got in and luckily you didn't have to be 21 to get into this hall. And I, you know what I did? I marched up on stage in the middle of his third song. I climbed the rafters, got right in front of him and took a snap to picture and then ran down because they were chasing me off and I got away with you it. rebel. And I have that picture I still have that picture framed, and I showed it to him, <laughs> and I told him the story, you know. But I was so obsessed with him, and I'm, what am I talking about? I'm still obsessed with him, but, um, you know, I'm not dangerous to him or anything. But every time I get a chance to meet him and talk to him, right. I've, I've met him twice I just, already. I, so. I just love the way that he doesn't need words in his songs. It's all, mm. his, his guitar says it all. Exactly, and that's. I mean, when he when he covers songs, I mean, you're mm -hmm. singing along because you you know exactly. It's just that's like when he does a day in the life by the Beatles. Yes, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, he doesn't have to. There's doesn't need to be a singer to do it, but I love how he he uh, cherishes the blues stuff too, and I love you know those early days when Rod was really raw before he got pop and discovered before he joined the Faces mm -hmm. when he was working with. Jeff Beck on that Truth album. Um, he, J There's a guy that used to be in Wet Willies, Jimmy. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on his last name. Jimmy. Um, ah. Doesn't matter. Anyway, he's amazing. He's been touring with Jeff. The Jeff Beck fans will know who I'm talking about. And um, his voice, you know, if you look at Wet Willies, his early recordings, he was just such a badass singer. Yeah. And so Beck has had him on the, on tour with him. And, uh, you know, he's always, he, he has women singing with him sometimes, too, that are mind-blowing. And they'll do live shows. And I, I also l respect how Jeff has women musicians, bass players and cellos, players that are women in his bands. You know, I, I think well, that's I so totally cool. agree with that. I, I I would love to have a female bassist in my band. I did it. I, we had two of them, but then they got stolen away to go do better things. There's a lot. There's a lot of them out there. There should be more. Okay, more so women need to play. Rosie, I want to let everybody know where to find you on the web. RosieFlores.com. Go sign up for her email list. It's awesome. It's funny. It's silly. I love that about it because I try to do a. a, a uh, uh, email thing I try to be funny try to be silly but what about really? so, so you do uh, you also play Seaboys 
pretty much every Friday for happy hour. Austin, Texas Sea Boys uh. on Congress Avenue, uh, 630 to 830. I play it every Friday except for when I'm out of town. That's right. Which I'm going to be touring to Europe this coming uh, February and um, again in September. I'm going to be on a cruise ship. Um, at the end of January. Is that the Outlaw Country Cruise? Outlaw Country awesome. Cruise for my fifth year. I love serious Outlaw Country Radio. They've been so supportive. Outlaw the blue. Country. Oh, you're being <laughs> Mojo Nixon <in> there. <laughs> I love him too. I love all those guys and I love the blues channels and um you know, that's where I've I've gotten a lot of support on internet and sal- I think satellite you have an, radio. I think you have another gig in town, residency. Yeah, my other residency is on Wednesday night upstairs, the Continental Gallery upstairs, right next to the Tattoo Parlor, right next to the Continental Club. Correct. And that's my Blue Moon Jazz Quartet. And I do not play any guitar on that. I just play music how, with how my voice. How good does that feel? I, it, I it's love fun. It. I love it when I can put my guitar down on stage and let everybody else do everything. I mean, if I could, if I was an, an if I was really good at jazz guitar and I will be someday because I'm studying it I don't know if I will ever be really good but I might be good enough let's put it like that because I'm studying it um then I can you know just play some jazz chords you know behind along with it yeah but I'll just you know to kind of accompany myself but right now if I did that I would take away from Jim Stringer and I mean no 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 that's not what I'm, I'm trying to say that when you sing you have to put all of your mind and heart and soul into melody as a singer. And if I'm distracted with playing, oh, do I have my fingers on the right notes? Do you know what I mean? I it I has do. to come all the way from your heart and soul into I mean, the it, voice because it, it's improvisation. So you can't be distracted with like playing it. rhythm. I like the way what you're saying. Cause do you I, know what I, I mean? I, I do because that's the, the feeling I get when I do drop my guitar that now I can be a rock and roll singer. Mm-hmm. Right, so now I can concentrate just on one thing and not have to concentrate on two, and so that that's that's just for me. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But if I had if I had the guitar in my hand, I just would sing, and then as soon as somebody was taking their solo, then I could back them on. Yeah, and then I could be a okay. guitar player for them. That's how I would handle it. There you go. You know, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and you play a lot of other shows around the country. Flying out every weekend, it seems like. I don't get to see you very often. <laughs> well, I had a really busy November. And I'm um, just trying to push Simple Case of the Blues. That's my latest record. came out last February. Which is incredible, by the way. Oh, I love that you. album. It's, got, and it's gotten a lot of praise. It, it, as it should have. Thank, thank God. <laughs> or thank y'all. <laughs> uh, thank I lo- the universe. I love that album. I think that you're doing awesome things. I'm just... I'm. I'm so happy for you, Rosie. I just think that's. I, I think Thanks. I, I think you're getting to a point in your life where now you're kind of in that groove, you know what you're doing. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not playing around anymore. Don't play around. I'm just, What's the point? Yeah, I, I don't have to exper. I'm not experimenting. I'm. I know where I'm going. But now. you're at a place right now where you're. You know now, now you, you've done a lot of stuff and now you've you've got another goal. You know, you're looking at that jazz thing, and I, I get it, and I, I totally admire well, that's, that. Well, that's part of who I am. I mean, a lot of people don't know. I mean, just because they've heard of me as my first signing in onto the radio and the music scene was through Warner Brothers Nashville Country, even though I was signed out of L.A., you know? Yep. But they don't know that I grew up listening to Ella Fitzgerald and Frank Sinatra and Nat King Cole, that that was the first music I ever sang. And that was the first music I ever recorded as a seven and eight year old. Nobody knows that. So for me to come back and do that, it didn't come out of nowhere. You know, they yeah. didn't know that I grew up in in the nineteen fifties singing along with Elvis and Buddy Holly and Jerry Lee. You know, and that was when this other stuff we used to record on my dad's two tracks. So all all those beginnings were your you're a kid. I mean, sure, I'm sure you tell me who you started out with when you were seven, because that's part of who you are. Uh, agreed. And it'll, you'll and that's never a lose that. That is a different conversation altogether. And then, yeah. actually, I want you. I'm going to challenge you. I want you to pick your top five albums of all times. You got to take rock and roll out of it. You got to say these are the top five records that I would take to my grave. 
That's what I want to challenge you, and we can do another podcast on it. Well, I mean, that's it's so hard. It's like, it's like, out of two hundred songs I've written, which are your top five favorite? Or you know, out of, I mean, there's so many bands and music that has influenced me. Like when you you called me up this morning and said to pick that, I was really upset. <laughs> I was like, "Damn it!" It is. It. it it's, I was it, like, everybody has a challenge because you get to like uh, you get to like three and like okay, well, or okay, f- I think this is four. Okay, but, but five. I've got like ten that I want for five. Yeah, and that's every, I, everybody I has the same crossing, challenge. I kept crossing names and albums out. You know, I was like trying to like whittle it down. You know, and I was like, "Damn it! Why didn't you ask me like a month ago?" Which you might have. I did. But you didn't like challenge me. You were just like, we're going to do this and I'm going to ask you for top five albums. I'm like, okay. And I didn't you like didn't, You didn't think I've just been it. busy. It's hard. It's hard. I've been busy, man. Anyway, listen, <laughs> everybody out there, please, rosieflores.com. What are you on Facebook? Uh, I think it's, I'm not sure. Search Rosie Flores and I'll see your, what, what, and the, you, you've got the, Inst- the Rosie Flores maybe. I'm not sure. That might be Instagram. But you're on Instagram, you're on, um, you're on Facebook. I don't know. I got my friends helping me take care of all that stuff. I, hey, man, that's that's the best way to do like it. Like I said, I don't have time. But I do. I will post now and then. And um, I, I might even post tomorrow because I have three days off. Of course, uh-huh. I should be packing, unpacking, and trying to move into my new place. But. Well, move into your new place. Get rid of all that mold <laughs> and that crap. No, no, that I'm, not, I'm not going back to the mold house. I know, but I just, I'm just i saying leave that behind. Oh, I did. I, I haven't been there for six months. Good for you. Yeah. All right. New. Got- this is going to be my new beginning. Okay, Gunner? I'm ready. This is t- 2020 is a brand new Rosie. Uh, wow. New, new home, new car. We'll sexier see. dresser. I don't know if that can happen. Sexier dresser. Are you going well, to keep the Keith haircut? You can still keep cutting your own hair. Yeah, but because you know I love that. Yeah, Gunner always he's always pushing me to have my Keith Joan Jet look, <laughs> which I've gotten more compliments on my hair in the last week or two weeks than ever. That's right. So it must it must be working for me. It is. Rosie, thank you so much for coming <laughs> out you. today and talking to me about your top five albums. And we're going to do this again, and you're gonna, I'm challenging you. You want a different five? I, I, no, I just want the real five. I don't know. Those are pretty real. You, do, you just wanted me to throw a jazz one in there, didn't you? I, I, I want everything. I want, I, I I, I'm challenging you because it's hard. I love You're going to start thinking about whatever it Whatever record, whatever album Billy, Billy Holiday recorded, I don't even know. All right. Every song All right, she ever recorded is my top five, five. favorite songs. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for listening. We will talk to you next time. Bye, Adios. Y'all. How awesome is Rosie? I said it earlier, but she has a day named after her. Rosie Flores Day. She has had an incredible career in music. She's even won a Peabody Award. It's insane. Anyway, if you got the gumption, head over to TheBigGunShow.com. That's TheBigGunShow.com. And check out what my band is up to these days. Uh, you can also catch us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of those with a handle of the Big Gun Show Band. The Big Gun Show Band. I'll be back in two weeks. Then every other week after that, close your eyes. Get back on the desert island again. What five records do you have? Until next time.